If you're building any type of a custom-built vehicle, there's one label that you never want it to be given, and that's a one-tire fryer. To ensure that you don't get that ugly label stamped on your ride, you have to get both of those wheels spinning at the same time. And one of the most simple and cost-effective methods for achieving that goal is to simply drop in a spool in the rear end. And while a spool can be great on the racetrack, it may give you some problems on the street. In this video, I'm going to give you a real-world demonstration of kind of what you can expect with a spool in your rear end. Really quickly before I get into the details, if you don't know me, I'm a wheelchair user, but I'm still a diehard car enthusiast. And here on this channel, I try to provide info rich and entertaining car content, but I try to maintain as much authenticity as possible. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. So as you can guess from the intro, I'm gonna talk to you about my experience having a mini spool in my old square body C10. But I'm going to try to make this quick because it's still freezing cold out here. The last few weeks, the weather has been extremely bipolar. First it was snowing, then it got warm, and then it started raining like crazy. And now it's sunny, but the temperature is still uh, in the teens. But enough complaining, let's get on with the video. Now when I first got this truck, like I've said before, it was completely stock. And honestly, it wouldn't even do a burnout when I first got it. It had a 305 engine and 273 rear gears. And even with the open differential, it wouldn't even burn one tire. So I didn't really need a positive track. But once I started upgrading the engine and I upgraded the rear gears to 410s, I finally, you know, got a little more power and I needed to look into getting rid of the old one tire fryer problem. So being an inexperienced college student on a very tight budget, I asked around about the most cost effective uh, and simplest way to achieve this goal. And what a lot of people told me was, you know, get a mini spool. Get a mini spool, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Yeah, well, it wasn't that much fun when I was trying to drive the truck on the street as a semi-daily driver. So in other words, unless you're planning on, you know, keeping your car for pretty much a weekend warrior or a full-blown race application, I don't recommend a swool of any kind, and I'm about to show you why. So there are several different ways to achieve that desired positive traction. And because I know some of you that's viewing this are probably trying to decide what system you want to use, I'm going to briefly explain the primary uh, types of differentials that are available so you can uh, kind of understand what separates them from each other. And then I'll explain my experience with the mini spool and give you a bit of a real world example of what you can expect. You know, before I start trying to explain this, I want to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. I am by no means any type of an engineer, so I may not explain this exactly correctly, and I'll try to make it as simple as possible. But uh, for you more seasoned viewers, if I make a mistake or don't explain something that you think needs to be explained, let me know in the comments. Okay, so basically, most vehicles come from the factory with what they call an open differential. With an open differential, when one wheel loses traction uh, from, you know, too much power overwhelming it or loose gravel or whatever, the differential only allows one uh, axle to have power transferred to it, which in turn results in only one uh, tire spinning. So if you did a burnout, uh, you would only see one wheel spinning. Now it is possible to get both wheels spinning with an open differential, uh, but normally only one will spin. And that's bad for traction because it only allows power to be transferred to one side, so it's not really sharing that power, evening it out between the two axles.
that's why uh, people want to upgrade to uh, you know some sort of positive traction device. These devices allow the power to be shared between the axles and allows the vehicle to ultimately get more traction. So the three primary devices that allow you to do this are limited slip differentials, locking differentials, and then spools. So when you talk about these, you can think of them kind of on a spectrum. The open differential is on the bottom of the spectrum where the there is absolutely pretty much complete slippage. Um, you know, when power is transferred through the drive shaft to the ring and pinion, it turns the inner housing and it only turns the spider gears inside the, the open diff, only transfers power to one axle. On the other end of the spectrum, which would be the spool, and I'll, I'll explain this more in a minute, um, there's absolutely no slippage. When the power gets transferred through the ring and pinion, the inner housing turns and both axles turn at the exact same amount of revolutions as the as its counterpart. So you have open differentials on one extreme end of the spectrum and you have spools on the other extreme end of the spectrum. But there are options on in the middle ground. And the terminology is kind of thrown around loosely sometimes. But the two primary devices are called limited slip differentials and locking differentials. Like I said, sometimes you may hear those two things referred to uh, inter interchangeably, but technically there is a difference. They're both in the middle ground of the spectrum, but the limited slip is closer to the open differential end, and the locking differential is closer to the spool end. So depending on the application, you may want to choose one or the other, uh, depending on what your ultimate goal is. If you plan on driving your vehicle on the street, primarily, a limited slip is probably your best bet. But if you're going to be taking your car to the racetrack or, you know, uh, it's a mudder type vehicle and you're more interested in traction with still, you know, some straightability, a locking differential is probably best. So really quickly, basically the difference between the locking differential and the limited slip, you can basically guess how they work from the name of them. A limited slip does just what it says. It basically limits the amount of slippage between the two axles. It basically allows it to work as an open differential when you're cruising and driving on the street. And if it senses that you need the power to differentiate, hence the word differential, it limits the amount of that slippage. Now, a locking differential essentially does the same thing in terms of differentiating the power but it does it a little bit more aggressively and more absolutely where a limited slip you know limits the amount of slippage but still allows some slippage a locker essentially locks the axles you know in to where they are turning exactly the same kind of like a spool does but only when the device senses that one side is losing traction. In other words, where a lemon slip still allows difference between the how much each wheel is spinning, the locker locks them in together, making them spin exactly the same when it is engaged. So now that we kind of have an understanding of the different types of differentials, I'll talk primarily about the spool. So I'm using that word differential, uh, Essentially, the word differential just means that the rear end allows the power to differentiate between the, the axles. So actually, technically, a spool is not a differential. A spool replaces that device inside there that has any type of gears, which allows the two axles to, you know, turn freely. A spool does not allow that. The spool locks both axles in permanently to where when one turns, the other turns exactly the same amount. If one turns a half a revolution, the other one turns half a revolution. Which is good for, you know, a straight line situation like a drag race where you want as much traction as possible and you're not worried about, you know, curves. But 
when you are making turns, this locked-in permanent feature can cause problems. And the reason is because when you're going around a curve or making a sharp turn, you need one wheel to slip a little bit because otherwise the other one is going to have to slide. That can make your tires wear out sooner and it can make you lose traction in turns which could make you slide and that could be dangerous. So now you can see why a limited slip or a locking differential would be beneficial over a spool because it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. So you may be asking, well, why would you ever go with the spool? Why wouldn't you always just go for that limited slip or locker so you could have the best of both worlds? Well, for one thing, limited slips and lockers are significantly more expensive and they're quite a bit more complicated, which is one reason I ultimately decided to install a mini spool in my C10. At the time, I was on an extremely tight budget and I actually thought I was gonna build a full uh, race truck out of this thing before I got a reality check of just how hard that is to do in a 4,000 pound brick. But if I haven't turned you off of the idea of spool yet and you're still watching, let me go into a bit more detail of what a spool does and what it is. Now you hear me say the term spool and mini spool and there is actually a difference. There's two devices. There is a mini spool and a full spool. They essentially both accomplish the same uh, overall goal, and that is to lock the rear axles in permanently where they both turn at the exact same revolution. Now a full spool replaces the entire uh, inside housing of the rear end, whereas a mini spool simply replaces just the spider gears or the guts of the inside of the, the housing. And obviously uh, the mini spool is less expensive than a full spool, but it's also not as strong and not probably not as reliable. So from here on out, I'm primarily gonna be speaking about uh, performance and behavior with a spool. Now, most of this stuff applies universally between a mini spool or a full spool. As I said, the mini spool replaces the insides of an open differential. You just gut it and take the spider gears out and replace it with, uh, it's, either, it's either two or three solid pieces of metal. I can't remember if it's two or three. I think it's three pieces, which permanently locks the axles in. Now this does make the rear end stronger because you don't have those little gears to worry about breaking, but it can potentially make it more susceptible to breaking an axle. So now the big question is, how does a vehicle behave on the street with a spool? Well, not great. Like I said, in a straight line, they're fine. But if you go around any type of a curve or make a sharp turn, one wheel has to basically slide to keep up with the other one. Now you can feel this in the, the car and you can also even hear it. It'll make your wheels or your, it'll make your tires bark. Listen to these clips right here. See, you could hear the tires barking when I would turn. That's literally the tires sliding across the pavement, the one that has to slide to keep up with the other. Now, as I said before, this can make your tires wear out quicker, and it can be dangerous. Going around curves too quickly, or especially in wet roads, it can make your rear end of your vehicle, you know, come, up, come loose and potentially make you wreck. So the bottom line is, if you are building a full out race car and you want to know for sure both of those wheels are going to be you know pushing your your vehicle down that track or when you're burning those tires a spool is a good way to ensure that but do i recommend using a spool on the street no i don't i don't recommend it it's not fully safe it's kind of annoying and it's just not a great idea but guys there you have it that's my experience that i've had and a little bit of a demonstration of how my truck behaves on the street with a mini spool. But I'm gonna get in out of this cold weather, but keep an eye out for the next couple of videos because I am 
currently working on uh, blacking out the tail lights for the truck. I've got them off, masked off, ready to paint, just waiting on it to warm up a little bit. And I've also got some new parts on the way. I'm gonna do a few more cosmetic upgrades to the truck, so keep your eye out for that. And uh, if you did like this, if you thought it was helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.